Well howdy guys, it's your boy Eisner Tomato, and today I'm going to give you a couple cheeky tips on how to draw the elusive human person. Now if I recall, in art school they told me some hoo-ha about the old eight head rule, so you draw your eight heads like so, then draw the body, then the necks, then the details. Now remember the human person constantly emits a wailing scream, so it's important to show that emotion in the faces. And done! A perfect human person, every time. But uh, I guess we still have a lot of time left, so uh, I guess I could also throw in some tips of how to draw a human being as well. Yeah, okay, that joke has run its course now. Okay, human being time. So, alright, first thing I like to do is draw the height of the person, alright? Width doesn't matter at this point because you can make them as wide as you want, really, but I'll get into that a bit later. The height is the key here. So all you gotta do is draw two horizontal lines, one over the other. And these will mark the very top and the very bottom of your person. But not the fun kind of bottom, unfortunately. Now you might be going, well how am I supposed to know where I put those lines? Well, considering we're drawing them in a white void right now, it literally doesn't matter. But just for demonstration's sake, I'll draw a couple more lines over here. Except this will be a wee or small person. Okay, so next we need to find the middle of the person. Which, because I've got these handy randy grids here, I can easily find. Now this will be important in a bit, alright? Just give me a minute, God! Okay, so now I'm going to draw placeholders for the head and the feet. And keyword here, placeholder, okay? My person isn't actually going to be an egghead, alright? I ain't drawing northern line here. Unless you are? Hmm. Now I know I went a little fast there, and that's because I'm impatient and I have it all memorized. But it helps allow me to explain that, you see for a typical person they are about 8 heads tall. And this can really help in figuring out where all the details go. So we know that the halfway point is there, and after consulting a calculator for 3.5 minutes, we know that half of 8 is 4. So I'm going to divide both the top and the bottom into 4s. Marvelous. I've now made a bunch of lines. And hey look, now I know exactly where to put this dumpy ass head. Now don't forget the feet. Typically they come up roughly a bit under halfway the bottom box. But uh, feet are kind of their own demon and I'll cover them in a later episode. For now just draw some sick ass triangles, hell yeah. There's a little something for all you foot fetishes out there. Now it's important to draw both the head and the feet first because that way it would give us a good overall sense of how the person as a whole will be looking. And that's super helpful. It's easy to get bogged down all up and drawing the face or whatever, only to zoom out and realize it's got a giant hand or something. Eek. Now width. As I said earlier, overall width varies and can differ from person to person. Personally, I got a couple of big old juicy fires that ain't ever gonna fit in this here pick. But there is one thing we can figure out right now, and that is shoulder width. Which actually helps us out a decent amount. Simply make these here lines into squares. But how do you do that? Bada bing. Bam. A perfect square. Just like me. Now the shoulders are going to be around the midway mark of these here squares. And here's a fun fact for you. Typically more femininely shaped people will have slightly more slanted shoulders than more masculinely shaped people. Of course, you can draw your person however you like. Just something to keep in mind. Okay, so now we're getting... uh, somewhere. If I squint my eyes super hard, it kind of looks like a fish? Well, it's missing a middle right now. Now can anyone tell me where the middle of the human body is? Ow, ow! Yes, Timmy? It's the belly button! Very good guess, Timmy. However, also extremely incorrect. You can go sit in the corner now in the dunce cap. The middle of the body is actually the crotch. Yes, that's right, the area of which all the exciting stuff generally happens. And for those of you paying attention, you might be thinking, Uh, wait, does that mean the legs are as long as the upper torso? You would be correct, and would have also achieved basic observation skills. Yes, indeed, your legs make up about half your body, so let's throw in some lines for fun. Oh, and also to map them out, I guess. And hey, guess what? The knees are about halfway down the leg as well. Just sitting on top of this box. Wow, the human body sure is weird and makes me uncomfortable. Alrighty, so now we gotta draw the arms, because apparently humans just can't get enough appendages, can they? Jesus Christ. Alrighty, so for arms, we're once again just looking for the length right now. But how do you figure that out? Well, luckily, most of us have a model on our person at all times. And by placing my arms down by my side, I can see that it comes down about roughly halfway down my thigh. Fantastic! And hey, once again, your elbow is halfway through. Man, this thing draws itself. Here's another quick little detail. If you want extra help, say if both your arms were spread out to the side, they will equal the same distance as your height with eight squares, see? Crazy stuff, huh? Duh, all right. Now we've got to do the torso, and now we are finally getting into some fun here. Now, typically, the belly button will go about here, between the third and fourth head box. But here comes the interesting part. If you draw a line from here to the shoulder, and make dots at the intersecting parts, we make... Some of God's greatest creations. 
the nipples. Now this is the point where things start to get pretty loose. You see, from this point onward, everything you draw is pretty dependent on how you want your person to look. Seriously, the human body is amazing in that it comes in all sorts of beautiful shapes and sizes, and it's seriously up to you on how you want to draw them. Now don't worry your excited little heads off just yet. I'm still gonna give you tips and pointers, and I want you to know this is a very basic way of drawing a human. And most artists will move past this and start developing their own way of drawing as well. I mentioned earlier that I drew the head and the feet in first because I was impatient. It's actually because I've drawn so much I actually don't have to do all this hullabaloo to get to where I need to be. It's all just practice after all. As you develop as an artist, you will start shaving away steps from this process as well to help develop your own style and rhythm, while other steps you might keep until the day you die. It's no pressure or anything, this stuff just happens naturally as you draw more and more. Okay, so I like to draw the fires first because they are probably my favourite cut to get at the butcher. Now in my opinion, the bigger the better, but I'll keep them at a reasonable size for the time being. You just want to make it large, smooth and round. And look, if you're having trouble drawing round parts, that's totally fine as they are seriously deceptively difficult to draw correctly. Just keep redrawing them until you get it right. And if it's still not working after a couple attempts, try and make your strokes bigger and rounder. A common problem people have while drawing is they draw body parts too small. So if you're having troubles, try looking into what you can draw just a bit bigger. Now once you've done that, you've got to do the other side. And make it look identical to the first side. Which seems like it can go suck a lemon, but you might find that all that practice from before might have subconsciously made you better this time. And then just gently connect them to the knee. Hot damn, alright, now comes the difficult part. The calves, or calves. I don't know, I'm not a doctor man, get off my back! So my advice is to make a slightly larger egg shape like this in the majority of these squares. It's kind of hard to explain so I suggest you look. And again, the width of this is up to you, but just keep in mind the proportions you have already drawn for the things like the thighs to help you out there. Calves are pretty round and stick out a fair amount. However, an interesting little tidbit is if your person is more of the athletic type, the calves might look slightly more square like this. But if they are more soft, they will appear more round. I'm gonna make mine soft because I like softness, and there is nothing wrong with that. Okay then, now we gotta connect them down to the feet. And this is kinda of weird because contrary to what I said earlier, ankles are often smaller than you might think. Weird, I know. It's a real good way to confuse the flip out of people and make them give up altogether. I gave up on art because ankles can suck a piece of bark. Okay, now we gotta do the inner legs. Essentially, you want to make a really downplayed and squashed down version of what you just did before. So here, the calves still stick out a bit, just not as much. And the thighs, while still round, are a lot more underplayed. Now you've got this little triangle crotch, and this is where you get to decide if you want to include a fire gap or a human fun receptor. Personally, again, I'm not going to bother with a fire gap because I personally don't really care for them. Plus, also generally I draw my characters with clothes on so it really matters less. Next, we gotta deal with the nipple situation because quite frankly, it's getting out of control. And here is once again a defining difference between people is that some people have this thing called boobies. Now, I don't know what causes this and quite frankly, it scares me. Sometimes they can be large and sometimes they might not appear at all. Either way, it's all valid so go to town. Or don't! Just bear in mind that through this process, the nipples might need to be adjusted and replaced. And hey, if you want to make some more definition for more masculinity and muscle, draw a couple horizontal and vertical lines like so. Wow, so defined. Once again, I'm going to go with the booby route, because YouTube was probably going to demonetize this video anyway. It's a flipping educational video, gosh dang it, and I haven't even said a real swear! Now it's important to do this first, because if you make anything too large in the front, you don't want to overlap something you've already drawn in the back. Now we got the waist, and again, this is up to you. Just remember where the thighs end and the armpit begins, because that's your point A and your point B you'll want to get to. However, a good tip is generally the sides will dip in a bit around the belly button area, and they will tell you more feminine people will have it dip in the most, but seriously, people can look like anything. So again, this is all up to you. Just remember what proportions you have already made at this point to help give you an idea of what you're going for. Alright, arms time. And look, I'm gonna tell you right now, arms suck. They suck hand puppets. Not because they are that difficult to draw, but they are just surprisingly uninteresting and difficult to explain. The best way I can think to put it is to think of them as a smaller, thinner version of the legs. Like how this part of the arm sort of works like the calf in that it gets larger closer to the joint and the wrist gets smaller like the ankle. Only difference is, is to make these curves a lot more subtler. It may take a bit of practice. And for this part of the arm being overall round like the fire, but not too round. And then with this line, you just want to connect it under the armpit where it will be connected. But aha! It's a trap! Now that looks dumb. What is this? The Last Jedi? <laughs> no, 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 no. You gotta think about the consistent width of the arm. It doesn't get smaller up here, it stays semi parallel to the other side. I know it's hard to explain, but look, you're gonna have a better looking arm if it's just two parallel lines as opposed to a triangle. Believe me. 
Whew, all right, now, what about the hands? Well, look, I'm not gonna lie, hands are in another ballpark of their own. Seriously, I know artists that just straight up try their best not to draw hands at all because they are such a nightmare. So I'll tackle them in a later episode, but I'll give you one crucial piece of advice right now. Hands are big, way bigger than people think, all right? The number one problem that like 99.98% of people have when drawing a person is making the hands too small because everyone thinks they are smaller than they are. Seriously, your hand is about the size of your face. So use that to help figure it out. Seriously though, if you think you've gotten everything else I've said down up until this part, this might be the thing to make your art perfect. Always, always keep that in mind. I'm serious, I'll be watching you. Okay, now for the head, we can make a basic northern lion egg shape for now. And when it comes to the neck, again, people tend to make them too small, of which I personally blame anime for. Reality is, is your neck is usually just a little bit less thicker than your head. And remember what I said earlier about the shoulders and angles and junk. Just keep them a straight line and just a nice little curve to connect it all together. Oh, and one last thing for a bit of flair. If you make some subtle imagination lines from your shoulders to say about here, you can make some little collarbones like this. Maybe even throw in a few more details like this and that and this and done. One almost complete human being. Now I think it goes without saying that obviously the face and details like that are for another episode. Yeah, I'm sorry. I know. Sh sh shut up! But hey, if you enjoyed this, let me know and maybe those burning answers will be addressed in the next episode of this. Or you'll just look it up on your own out of impatience. Both valid options to be honest. But as for the next episode, we'll be taking another look at the human body, this time from different angles and hey, maybe even some different poses as well if you're good. Anyway, I've been Eyes Not Amato Jaws, these have been tips on how to draw a human person and other stuff, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.